Imagine going through life wondering if your heart will suddenly speed up uncontrollably with no warning. Well, my next guest, Melanie, lives with that fear every day. Now, Melanie has a condition called atrial fibrillation, or AFib. At any time, her heart can start racing, and during one episode, it went up to 300 beats per minute. Here's Melanie's story. Melanie. I was in my home office when I realized something wasn't quite right. My heart skipped a beat, and then it took off racing. I called the doctor, and he said, get to the emergency room. That's when I found out that I had a heart condition called AFib. It's an irregular heartbeat that can lead to strokes. When I'm experiencing AFib, I feel like I'm running a marathon 24 hours a day. My heart condition kept coming back. Sometimes I might just be walking or leaning over. I was afraid to go anywhere by myself. I knew that I couldn't live this nightmare the rest of my life. I felt like I was a stroke walking around waiting to happen. I didn't want to be watching over my shoulder to make sure that the AFib beast doesn't strike again. Well, Melanie is joining me now along with our very good friend, Dr. Frieda Lewis-Hall, Chief Patient Officer of Pfizer. So welcome to you both. Glad for you to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Thank you. Melanie, when this all started, how often did you have AFib episodes? Well, over a couple of years, I had about 30 to 40 episodes. Oh, seriously? So once to twice a month, mm -hmm. typically. And it still is scary because I'm always watching to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Would you have any warning at all before an episode started? And how long did they last? Well, typically they just come out of nowhere. And it could be anywhere from a few hours to a whole day. So Dr. Frieda, Tell everybody what exactly is AFib mm -hmm. and how dangerous is it? She said she had 30 or 40 of mm -hmm. these things in a year. Atrial fibrillation or AFib is the most common heart rhythm problem. It's a condition in which the heart beats too slowly, too fast, or in an irregular way. It can be permanent, as in continuous, or it can be episodic, as Melanie has described. Now, as to the dangers, it can lead to serious health consequences, like heart failure or stroke. In fact, people with AFib have a five times greater risk of stroke than those with regular or normal heart rates. So during an AFib episode, what is actually happening to the heart? AFib occurs when the electrical signal becomes very rapid and disorganized. And what happens in the heart is these upper chambers contract irregularly as a result of that and are unable to push blood into the lower chambers. That blood then may pool and develop clots. The clots then may travel to the brain and block or limit blood flow and may cause a stroke. So the important thing is Melanie described well some of the symptoms that you may have, palpitations, shortness of breath, tiredness, dizziness, weakness. Now, the scary thing is that there may be no signs at all. Oh, really? No, really. Well, so then who's at risk for developing this? Age is a major risk factor. About 9% of people 65 and over in the U.S. have AFib compared to only 2% under 65. Now, there are other risk factors, such as um, high blood pressure, a history of cardiovascular disease, thyroid problems, diabetes, asthma, sleep apnea, or excessive drinking. Hmm. Well, despite having AFib, I know you travel a great deal and live a very active lifestyle. So what's your secret? So I travel about 50% of the year and I definitely stay in close contact with my doctors and make sure I never miss any appointments. I also make sure to take care of myself to get seven to eight hours of sleep a night, mm -hmm. stay hydrated, and perhaps most importantly, to make sure that I live as stress-free as possible. If anyone has any of the risk factors that uh, we've talked about, particularly being over 65, uh, 
what's to do? So Melanie told us some of the important steps to take, but if you have any of the symptoms that we talked about, and in particular, if you're 65 and older, it's really important to connect with your doctor and have this discussion and make sure that you're paying attention or are aware of your heart health um, when you go for your regular routine visits. And obviously another important factor is educating yourself. And one of the best places to do that is gethealthystayhealthy.com. And of course, while you're there, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter and um, all that great information gets done to you. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall.